Today, in our reading of St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica, we are on question 10, article 5, in the first part, the prima pars. Question 10 is about God's eternity, and article 5 asks uh, for the difference of a eternity and time. Objection 1. It seems that a eternity is the same as time. For Augustine says, that God moves the spiritual through time. But a eternity is said to be the measure of spiritual substances. Therefore, time is the same as a eternity. Reply to Objection 1. Spiritual creatures as regards successive affections and intelligences are measured by time. Hence also, Augustine says, that to be moved through time is to be moved by affections. But as regards their nature, they are measured by a eternity. Whereas regards the vision of glory, they have a share of eternity. Objection 2. Further, it is essential to time to have before and after. But it is but it is essential to eternity to be simultaneously whole, as was shown above in the first article. Now, Ave eternity is not eternity, for it is written in Sirach that eternal wisdom is before age. Therefore, it is not simultaneously whole, but has before and after, and thus it is the same as time. Thomas's reply to objection two. A eternity is simultaneously whole, yet it is not eternity, because before and after are compatible with it. Objection 3. Further, if there is no before and after in a eternity, it follows that in a eternal things there is no difference between being, having been, or going to be, since then it is impossible for a eternal things to have been, it follows that it is impossible for them not to be in the future, which is false since God can reduce them to nothing. Reply to Objection 3. In the very being of an angel considered absolutely, there is no difference of past and future, but only as regards accidental change. Now to say that an angel was, or is, or will be, is to be taken in a different sense according to the acceptation of our intellect, which apprehends the angelic existence by comparison with different parts of time. But when we say that an angel is, or was, or was, is, or was, we suppose something, which being supposed its opposite is not subject to the divine power. Whereas, when we say he will be, we do not as yet suppose anything. Hence, since the existence and non-existence of an angel considered absolutely is subject to the divine power, God can make the existence of an angel, of an angel not future. But he cannot cause him not to be while he is, or not to have been, or after he has been. Objection 4. Further, since the duration of eternal things is infinite as to subsequent duration, if eternity is simultaneously whole, it follows that some creature is actually infinite, which is impossible. Therefore, eternity does not differ from time. Thomas replies to objection 4, saying, The duration of eternity is infinite, for as much as it is not finished by time. Hence, there is no incongruity in saying that a creature is infinite, inasmuch as it is not ended by any other creature. On the contrary, Boethius says, Who commandest time to be separate from eternity? I answer that, Eternity differs from time and from eternity, as the mean between them both. This difference is explained by some to consist in the fact that eternity has neither beginning nor end. Eternity, a beginning but no end, and time, both beginning and end. This difference, however, is but an accidental one, as was shown above in the preceding article. B. 
Because even if Ava Eternal Things had always been, and would always be, as some think, and even if they might sometimes fail to be, which is possible to God to allow, even granted this, Ava Eternity would still be distinguished from eternity and from time. Others assign the difference between these three to consist in the fact that eternity has no before and after, but that time has both together, has both together with innovation and veteration, and that a eternity has before and after without innovation and veteration. This theory, however, involves a contradiction, which manifestly appears if innovation and veteration be referred to the measure itself. For since before and after of duration cannot exist together, if a eternity has before and after, it must follow that with the receding of the first part of a eternity, the after part of a eternity must newly appear, and thus innovation would occur in a eternity itself, as it does in time. And if they be referred to the things measured, even then an incongruity would follow, for a thing which exists in time grows old with time because it has a changeable existence, and from the changeableness of a thing measured, there follows before and after in the measure, as is clear from Aristotle's physics. Therefore, the fact that an eternal thing is neither inveterate nor subject to innovation comes from its changelessness, and consequently its measure does not contain before and after. We say then that since eternity is the measure of a permanent being, in so far as anything recedes from permanence of being, it recedes from eternity. Now some things recede from permanence of being, so that their being is subject to change or consists in change, and these things are measured by time, as are all movements, and also the being of all things corruptible. But others recede less from the permanence of being, for as much as their being neither consists in change, nor is the subject of change. Nevertheless, they have change annexed to them, either actually or potentially. This appears in the heavenly bodies, the substantial being of which is unchangeable. And yet with unchangeable being, they have changeableness of place. The same applies to the angels, who have an unchangeable being as regards their nature, with changeableness as regards choice. Moreover, they have changeableness of intelligence, of affections, and of places in their own degree. Therefore, these are measured by a eternity, which is a mean between eternity and time. But the being that is measured by eternity is not changeable, nor is it annexed to change. In this way, time has before and after. A eternity in itself has no before and after, which can, however, be annexed to it, while eternity has neither before nor after, nor is it compatible with such at all. That is Article 5, Question 10, the Prima Pars, St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica. Thank you for watching.